What's up, everybody? I'm Randy. This is Five Five Garage, and today we're going to be starting a new project series. So, what is this new project series going to be about? Well, if you've been following the channel, and you should be following the channel, you know that I have addressed the intake, my boost tubes, and my fuel pump internals on my 2010 Monster Speed 3. Now, as I was doing research, I found that there is a maintenance that needs to be done on the car, and I am not sure that mine has been done yet. And the maintenance I am talking about is cleaning the valves. Now, the Mazda Speed 3's motor is what's known as a direct injection motor, where the fuel is directly injected into the cylinder. Now, how this differs from a car where the fuel and air is mixed before it gets into the cylinder is the fuel-air mixture has a chance to flow over the valves, and that is what kind of keeps them clean. Well, in a direct injection motor, we don't have that. The issue with direct injected motors is there is no fuel-air mixture that flows over the valves. Since the fuel is directly injected into the combustion chamber, there is no liquid that flows into the cylinder head or over the valves. Now, the EGR and the PCV valve both are routed back into the inlet track. And what happens there is there are oil vapors that are present and these can collect on the valves and start to build up. And next thing you know, you are experiencing reduced airflow in your cylinder head. So, most people have done this maintenance at 30,000 miles. I am currently about 62,000 miles. And from the various photos that I've seen, it can look pretty nasty in there. So. Before I go on to any other power adding projects, I decided to go ahead and take this time and clean my valves. Now, for this new project series, things are gonna be done a little bit differently. Usually I perform the modification and I put the car back together and then proceed on from there. But in this series, I'm going to do this in stages. The reason I decided to do the videos this way is so if you just need to do the intake removal and the valve cleaning, you can see how that's done. And if you want to do the same processes that I am doing, it is far easier when you get the intake manifold just to go ahead and do it at once. But I decided instead of making one long video, I'll break it up into smaller segments. That'll make it easier to watch. And if you're just performing one of those tasks, it makes it far easier for you, the viewer, to be able to see what needs to be done. So with all that said, let's get started. Okay, in order for us to get started removing the intake manifold, we are going to move some various components off the engine. So, we need to remove the shroud and the intercooler. We're going to need to remove our intake. We're also going to need to remove the battery to give us enough space to work around in here. So, I am going to go ahead and remove those. And to save you guys some time, because you've probably seen me do this uh, numerous, various times, I am gonna stop the video here and pick it back up when I get ready to start removing the intake manifold. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, I've removed the battery. I've removed my top mount intercooler. I've also had to remove my intake and the turbo inlet pipe to give me enough room to get in here. So, the first thing we need to start doing is the dismantling process so we can get our intake manifold off. Now, the first place you wanna start is right here. This is the EGR return tube. We need to take these two bolts out and remove this. And then next up is the throttle body, which is down here. This is your throttle body and it is held on with four eight millimeter bolts. Now, there are a set of coolant lines that is connected to this, and at this point in time, do not remove those lines. Just disconnect this and then set it off to the side. Okay guys, the next step is you have to remove this vacuum line. Now I'm using my cell phone camera so you guys can see which line it is. And what it does is it connects to the intake manifold and it comes over here, it connects to this, which goes to your brake booster. Now you have to remove this line. So what you need to do here is rotate this blue clip until it comes off counterclockwise. 
Okay, so I grabbed a screwdriver so you guys can see and just rotate it till it comes off like that. And then go ahead and, man, great. I'll pick that up off the floor later, but go ahead and pull up on this. And then there you go. Okay, next thing we need to remove is the vacuum regulator module that is found on the top of the intake manifold. There are four eight millimeter screws that you have to remove and an electrical connector. There's also a vacuum line that you need to trace back and disconnect from here. And you can disconnect that first line over here, and it's the one that the vacuum regulator is connected to. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the connectors for my uh, spark plugs, and just so I can make it easier, so I can just go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, back to the cell phone again. On this side, on the passenger side of the engine, there are three electrical connectors you need to remove. This one, this one, and that one. Okay, back over here on the driver's side. As you can see, this is where the throttle body went and nasty. So I'm gonna clean that. But in the meantime, you're gonna need either a 22 millimeter wrench or a very good adjustable wrench and loosen and remove this EGR uh, return line. If you're having issues breaking loose that 22 millimeter nut on the EGR return, Spray some PB Blaster on it. I sprayed mine for and let it sit for about 15 minutes. And then I was able to break it loose with an adjustable crescent wrench. And now I can go ahead and unscrew that out. So I noticed when I got my throttle body off, you really can't see it, but there are some like, so it looks like some oily deposits in here and to give you an idea this is white paper towel this is the same paper towel that i just wiped it with so this is definitely a good idea to go ahead and remove the intake manifold and give everything a good cleaning okay we're back after a little break. I went ahead and PB blastered these bolts to help them uh, break loose. Also, you can tell I've already went ahead and removed my serpentine belt. Um, if you don't know how to do this, I will link in the description a couple of how-tos with pictures showing how to do this. But for now, we can start working on getting ready to unbolt the intake manifold and I need this bolt to come out but I'm going to go ahead and just remove this idler pulley setup just to get it out of the way for now. And to remove these you're going to need a 12 millimeter socket. Now we can finally start removing the bolts for the intake manifold. Now you want to go starting on the passenger side you want to work your way across and just loosen them don't fully take the bolts out yet. And then once we get it, once we get the bolts loose and you can pull it away from the block, then we'll go ahead and remove the bolts. Okay, got the last bolt out and this should just come on out. Now, there's still another connection that you have to disconnect at the bottom. Okay guys, another pro tip is when you get this final electrical connection off and you're happy and you start pulling the intake off, don't forget that the PCV valve hose is down here and you gotta get that off or this won't come out. 
And after much wrangling, let's go back a little bit. We get the intake out. Welcome back everybody. It's day two of this project. And as you can see, got an intake manifold off. Now I will use my cell phone and take some footage so I can show you all how grimy and kind of nasty that my valves look. So this was definitely a needed maintenance. And as we have it apart, I'm gonna work on probably removing the VTCS from my intake manifold as well. And there's a couple other things I wanna do. So that's one of the reasons why this is taking a little bit longer than some of my other videos. But I figured since I got the car apart this far anyway, might as well take the opportunity and tackle a couple things. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the dirty part, which is cleaning the valves. Now there's multiple ways you can do this. Some people like to use an air compressor and get some walnut blasting media and do it that way. And that will ensure a very efficient and thorough clean. But for me, I am gonna try it a different way. So I went out and I bought some picks, I got some brushes, and I also picked up a set of heavy duty latex gloves to protect my hands. And I will be using some, a pretty stout uh, carb and PCB cleaner. And hopefully I'm gonna spray this on and let the valve soak for a little bit and start using the picks to start breaking it up. And then I will use the brushes to try to get in and around the valves and clean off as much as possible. And if that doesn't work, I might have to use the air compressor walnut blasting method, but we'll see how this goes first. And now I'll give you a little bit of a safety announcement. You will be working with volatile chemicals, okay? So you wanna make sure that you protect your hands, which is why I got the gloves. You might wanna put on some long sleeve clothing to uh, make sure there's any splatter or anything. Make sure you wear your safety goggles and just take your time. There's really no need to rush. Um, it's one of the reasons why I waited until we had a four day weekend to do this. So take your time, be safe, and let's get to clean those valves. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some cleaner and I'm going to spray it into the intake track to see which pores, which ports are closed. And the way you can tell is you'll spray a little winner and see if it pulls up. And if it pulls up and doesn't drain out, it's closed. And you can go ahead and check and let those pull up a little bit and break some of that carbon down. Now make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area because this stuff will give you a headache. Okay, now that you got some cleaner in there and you've been using your picks to kind of break up the carbon deposits, how do you get it out of there? Well, in this case, I am going to use my air compressor with blowgun attachment. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have some shop rags handy. You want to put the nozzle of the blowgun to the intake port, then cover it with rags, and then blast it with air to try to get as much of the cleaner and the deposits out of there as possible. Now you don't want this spraying all over the place, so that's the reason why you need to have the shop rags handy. Okay, I'm back, give you a little bit of an update. Now last night I had one set of valves left to clean and I decided since I had a little bit of time to let the valves sit in the cleaner overnight and see if it would be easier to clean them that way instead of the spray them down, let them sit for an hour and then try and clean them that way. So I'll take that with my phone camera to let you guys see if there's any difference. So as you can see, I just got done spraying them out. And see if I can get this to focus. It, that one's okay. The other one definitely, the other one definitely got a little bit cleaner, but even with letting them soak, you still got to get in there with some brushes and some picks and clean them up. So I 
overnight. Looks like it might have broken some stuff away a little bit easier, but uh, you're, you're pretty much still going to get in here with brushes and some picks no matter what. All right, so you guys, some before and after video. This is after I cleaned them. Much better than what they were before. Okay, now that I got all of the valves clean, I went ahead and stuffed some paper towels into the intake ports. So to make sure that nothing is going to fall in there. And I'm gonna take some of the carb cleaner that I have and go ahead and spray this down. I made a mess. <laughs> so I recommend if you're gonna do this to have lots of shop, shop towels and things ready. Um, but I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, clean up this gasket surface before I proceed on. At this point is normally when you would start reinstalling the intake manifold. But I have a couple of mods that I want to do while I have the intake manifold off. I have an oil catch can and a PCB plate from Damon Motorsports I'm looking forward to installing, as well as an EGR delete kit from James Barone Racing. So look for those videos in the future. I'm gonna leave a couple links down in the description showing some of the guides that I followed taking the intake manifold off. They come with pictures and it, it was really helpful for me to be able to see which bolts that I had to take off and how to get them off properly. So once again, check down in the links section and I will have those for you. And that is how I clean the valves on my Mazda Speed 3. It's a fairly lengthy process, just take your time. Um, I was probably a little bit more nitpicky than I should have been about cleaning my valves, but I wanted to make sure I got them good and properly clean. But probably if I have to do this again, and I'm hoping that I don't have to do this again, but I think if I do, I will try media blasting and film that and just show the difference in the processes. Hopefully you all liked the video. If you did, go ahead and leave me one of these. If you guys and gals really appreciate the videos that I'm putting on this channel, especially the Mazda Speed 3 content, go ahead, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell. You would greatly make my day if you do that. So hopefully you all are getting your valves clean and going out there zoom zooming around, but unfortunately. I got to get started on the next mod for this car, so I will see you all next time.